Welcome to MTC's four-part series on smart parking. This is part one, Introduction to Parking. For cities, parking is destiny, and it's something that all people who work or live or play in cities care about. Residents want to make sure that there's a parking space near their house and that they have space for their guests. Business owners want to make sure that there are front door available spaces for customers and places for their employees to park. Developers want to make sure that they have enough parking to be able to finance their projects, but not too much parking to make their projects unaffordable. Cities want to make sure that they have the right number of parking spaces and that that parking is well managed, but not too many parking spaces so that they become automobile oriented. Transit agencies want to make sure that automobile dependent customers are able to access transit. And regional agencies like MTC want to make sure that smart parking policies are implemented, knowing that they are key to meeting our regional economic development, congestion management, quality of life, social equity, and air quality goals. But how parking is built and how it is designed has a huge impact on what our communities look like. In this simple example from the Bay Area, you can see that when parking is dedicated to individual land uses, that oftentimes we're providing more parking space than we have building space, and that our environments are given over overwhelmingly to the automobile instead of people. When parking is provided free, it also has a significant impact on our choices about how to get around. Um, while walking is free, it's time consuming and it may not be convenient in bad weather. Similarly, biking might be free, but uh, it might not uh, feel safe or comfortable to bike or it may be difficult to carry groceries. Uh, transit uh, could be useful if it's available, but it costs money. So if driving is faster and if parking is free, why not drive for all of our trips? One reason we shouldn't uh, assume that all people will drive for all trips is that parking is expensive to provide. If we just want to build a surface parking lot, you can figure it costs about $5,000 per parking space to build that lot, not counting land value. If you build a parking structure above ground, figure that those spaces cost about $25,000 per space. Below grade, it's even more expensive at about $35,000 per parking space. And yet, most of us still believe that somewhere in the Bill of Rights or in Leviticus, we're guaranteed both abundant parking and, most importantly, free parking. And yet, we're finding here in the Bay Area that our communities and our attitudes are changing. Not entirely, but shifting. One way that they're shifting is that our region is getting older. Um, older people are driving less um, and are more interested in being able to walk um, in order to maintain their health as they get older. Similarly, the boomer population is increasingly valuing walkability and quality of life and not automobile-oriented landscapes. More importantly, younger people are no longer seeming to believe that automobiles will bring them autonomy, freedom, and sex. And instead, they're more interested in their social networks, both on foot and through electronic media. And yet, in most of our communities, we're still assuming that a one-size-fits-all solution works for parking based upon data from previous generations and previous demographics. But what if that number is not right for you or for your community? More importantly, why do we assume that parking is a fundamental human need, so important that it needs to be provided free for all trips? We have to remember that parking demand, like demand for any other good in our society, is a factor not just of supply, but also of price. Why in our society, where we use the free market in order to balance supply and demand for goods like food, clothing, and housing for people, do we still use a Soviet communist method for providing parking for every use? Indeed. Why do governments regulate parking so that we require housing for cars, but not for people? Indeed, as our communities are changing, we need to rethink parking requirements in order to provide more choice for changing lifestyles, changing priorities, recognizing that a one-size-fits-all solution doesn't work for all of our communities.